All right, continuing 7.4 on inverses, we have 3x minus 5. So we're going to try to find the inverse here. Um, to do that, you want to write it instead of having an f of x, you write it with a y. So we have y equals 3x minus 5. And what we want to do is we basically want to solve for the x. So I want to move everything over, and I want to get x all by itself. So in order to do that, I'd add 5 to both sides. I get y plus 5 equals 3x. And to get x all alone, I would divide both sides by 3. And the 3's cancel out, so we get x equals y plus 5 over 3. So this is my g of x now. This is my g of x, and this is my f of x. The point is, what we were talking about on the last slide, was you have to substitute each of these back in. And it doesn't matter the order that you want to do it. I could take this item and plug it in for x and get an answer or I can take this item and plug that in for y. Either way, I eventually have to do it to both of them, so it really doesn't matter which one I start with. So me personally, I am going to start by taking the uh, y and plugging that in, so 3x minus 5 in here. When I do that, um, I realize on top that negative 5 and 5 cancels out, right? So all, I left, uh, all I'm left with is 3 over 3, and uh, 3x over 3, and the 3's cancel out. So I end up with x equals x. Well, like I said, that's what we're looking for. I want to see if both sides are the same when we solve this. But just because x equals x, I have to make sure y also equals y. So when I'm doing this, I'm now going to start with this, but I'm going to plug this whole, or sorry, this whole item in for x. So instead of that x being there, I'm going to plug in the y plus 5 over 3. And what I realize is the 3's cancel out. So I get y plus 5 minus 5, and plus 5 minus 5 cancels out. So I get y equals y. So since x equals x and y equals y, this proves that these two items are truly inverses of each other. So why don't you... So with example 4, this is saying let f of x equal x squared minus 3, but we only want our answer when it's greater than or equal to 0. We want to find the inverse is what it's saying. So when I'm doing this problem, um, once again I need to solve for x, so I would add 3 to both sides, so I get y plus 3 equals x squared, and I square root each side, and I end up with x equals plus or minus the square root of y plus 3. Well, this isn't a problem, except this is where this comes into play. It says I only want the answer when x is greater than or equal to 0. That's the only time I want the answer. Since that's the only time I want the answer, that means I only want the positive answer here. All right, I only want the positive answer because I only want it when it's greater than or equal to 0. So, basically, I have this as my answer, positive square root of y plus 3, and I have this, um, x squared minus 3. This is my f of x, this is my g of x down here. So I have to take turns plugging each of these items in. So I'm going to take this 4x, which is down here, and take this positive version and plug it in. The square root of a square, that cancels out. So I get y equals y plus 3 minus 3. And plus and minus 3 cancels out, so I get y equals y. So far, so good. So now let's take the second item, which is the square root of y plus 3. I'm going to plug in the original y into the problem right here. So when I do that, I end up with square root of x squared minus 3 plus 3. Well, minus 3 and plus 3 cancel. So I have x equals the square root of x squared, and the square root of a squared cancels. So I'm left with x equals x. So, yes, the square root of y plus 3 is the inverse function. Um, but what we need to keep in mind is it's only an inverse function when this is greater than negative 3, and that's very important. If I plug in something that is less than negative 3, like let's say I plugged in negative 10, I'd get a negative number underneath the square root. And if it's underneath the square root and it's negative, it's imaginary. So that won't work. So I need to keep this in mind when I'm doing these problems, that um, there is some domains that we need to keep in mind with these roots that will uh, make it work as well. So um, keep in mind with the inverses um, that you have to get x equals x and y equals y for it to truly be an inverse. Um, now we're going to try to graph this. So the last thing here is let's graph it. Um, x cubed, we have x cubed equals. And here's the list. And on your calculator, on your graphing calculator, you can just type in, um, go to 
y equals and do x which is right beside alpha caret sine 3 and press graph and you can see what the graph looks like it kinda goes down like this and up and it kinda curves a little bit um, you can press second graph and get your list of points and that is what I have right here for you already and now if I wanted to uh, I want to graph the inverse as well so to, to solve for x I would cube root both sides so I get the cube root of y equals x well here's the problem on your calculator you can't graph the cube root of y it's y equals right notice when you press the button it's a y equals button so in order to actually truly graph these points I have to put an X in here. So basically when you type this in, instead of Y, you'll go uh, under Y equals, you do X with a caret sign, parentheses, because the cube root is the same as 1 divided by 3. And when you graph that, you can see that it kind of looks the same. It starts over here, and it kind of S's up. And if you go to second graph, we have a list of all the points there as well, which is what I have right here. Um, notice how I jumped around with the points. I have negative 8 negative 1 because I just tried to find nice whole numbers that worked notice how negative 8 is negative 2 in your list and I went the whole way down to negative 1 I didn't figure I needed to plug in all those little decimals I found numbers that would work so when I go to graph this um, obviously I can't graph negative 3 negative 27 so I graph negative 2 negative 8 negative 1 1 is right here 0 0 it's right there 1 1 and 2 8 so I connect them and there is my graph for x cubed. So to graph the uh, cube root function here, um, negative 8, negative 2 is right here, negative 1, 1 is right here, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 8, 2 would be way out over there, and I connect that. And notice how it's identical, it's just kind of flipped over this line right here and we actually know what that line is that's the y equals x so the inverse of this function is actually the graph graphs inverses are actually flipped here over the y equals x line so here is your homework and if you have any questions or concerns please feel free to email me and we shall chat with the next section